At this time, we're really excited to have the head coach of the Boise State Broncos, Leon Rice, in his 14th season, 22-10, uh, 13-5, and five, out of the uh, Mountain West, finishing in third place. And this is the third straight appearance. Second. You're tied for second. Tied for second. Okay, I'm sorry, Coach. Yeah. I go off the three. I saw three. USA Today had a sixth place. Um, they get this. But <laughs> this is your third straight appearance in the NCAA tournament which is uh, something to be extremely proud of. Uh, Coach, before we open up the floor to questions, uh, just what your group's been able to accomplish this year and uh, the season that they've had. Yeah, they've been a terrific group. I mean, we scheduled really, really hard and went through a, a great November with a game at Clemson. We played uh, Virginia Tech, Butler, Virginia Commonwealth, came off the road after an 11-day trip. Went and beat St. Mary's on a neutral. Played North Texas, beat them. I mean, played Washington State. Had we played a lot of good teams in that stretch, and I think that got us ready for a terrific Mountain West. And and uh, you know we went out and got some amazing road wins in the Mountain West, uh, winning at the Pit, which is really really hard to do at Nevada, and you know the final senior night uh, at San Diego State you know, where they were 15 and 0, got to win there. So we accomplished some really special things with this group and uh, excited to be here now. Questions for Coach Rice. Let's start in the second row. John Wistrow, Idaho Press. Leon, just, you know, all year we've been talking about, you know, first win in NCAA tournament history has been a goal for this program. Now that you're potentially on the eve of it, just what's, what's the excitement? I know obviously you still have a lot of work to do, but, you know, just – What's, what's the thought process you get ready for this game tomorrow? Well, this team has never lost a game in the, in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, you know, you, you look at those stats and those can go way back. And a lot of, you know, some of them I wasn't even at Boise State. I mean, it, it, uh, so that's not something we pay attention to. It's not a, you know, that's not something the team talks about or looks at. It's, it's we're getting ready to play a really, really good Colorado team. Uh, you know, Tad's a good, good friend of mine. I watch this team uh, probably more than anyone I have in the country. So when our names flashed up together, I was like, well, at least I've seen these guys a lot. And uh, they're terrific. I mean, they got three guys that are on the NBA draft board. They got a terrific coach, terrific coaching staff. And they're a team that, you know, looks like they're playing their best basketball right now. I think they've won eight out of the last nine. And and have done it in looking really, really good. So uh, we know our work's cut out for us, and you know I think it's two really good teams playing Wednesday night. Dad, Dad was telling us a story about how Mark Turgeon just kind of connected you two, yeah. and just you know, thirty years later, just what's what's been what's been about that bond that's you know you guys have been able to keep it so strong. Well, Taz just he's just such a great guy, and and. You know, we actually worked the last two years together with USA Basketball, and, you know, our families are tight, and uh, we've just been going really close over the year because he's a guy that, um, you know, I've always respected his feel and his take on things, and so, you know, he, I bounce ideas off him all the time, and he, you know, hopefully I help him with some stuff too, and, you know, we just, we've just grown our relationship, you know, our fam like I said, our families are tight, our wives are really close, and you know, uh, love his dog, Betty. <laughs> That's the best thing about him. Uh, but, you know, it's just, we just go back a long ways, and there's a lot of history there and a lot of respect. And, um, you know, and, and then you see the, out of 67 other teams, we get Tad, you know. But, but that's just the way it is, and, and we know that. That's our business, and we just got to do our jobs. Uh, the question is, what what type of dog type is of, Betty? Like a, a mini, a golden doodle or mini golden doodle, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, second row on the other aisle. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dane Daily News. Uh, Coach, again, when you when you guys met, um, people hit it off sometimes, right? Yeah. What about each other? You, him, you kind of help. You feel like why you hit it off, why you kind of clicked as friends and, and stayed close. Yeah, well, Turge told me as soon as I got the job at Northern Colorado, because I was, Turge and I spent a little time together at Oregon, because I was leaving and Turge was coming in with Jerry Green. And 
church says, oh, you got to go see my best friend lives in Colorado. You got to, he's a high school coach. He's a financial planner. You know, he, he worked uh, uh, in that industry. And so I drove down to Boulder. We went out and got together for an evening and I just hit it off. I was like, this guy's great. And, and then I was recruiting one of his players and I loved the kid. I was like, we need to take this kid. And my head coach didn't do it. I was you know, and the kid went on to be a great player. And Tad still blames me for that. He's like, and I'm like, no, I wasn't the head coach. I didn't get the final say. I wanted him. So we, we joke about that. Matt Dilley was his name. Uh, he, and Tad was at Longmont. And then, you know, I remember when Tad was going to get into college coaching. And, you know, he's, I was making $20,000 at Northern Colorado, you know, and I'm sure that was attractive to him. And, uh, he was going to go to be like either restricted earnings or, you know, ops guy back then it, it was different. And, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this guy's crazy. He's leaving this financial industry that he's doing really well in to get into coaching. I'm like, really, you're going to do this. And he jumped in and the way his career went. So, it, you know, that's where I was like, okay, I respect this guy. He's, he's going to do what he loves. And, and, you know, you flash forward to now it worked out pretty good for him. Jeff, another question? Yeah, I was going to ask about, did you encourage him to get into college coaching? Obviously, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, now that we're here in Dayton together, I wish I wouldn't have. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have talked him out of it, yeah. Of yeah. It. Um, so you played last year. Yeah. Uh, what was that like the first time playing each other, and does it feel any different the second time? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just put blinders on, really, and you don't. Like, it's not Tad and me. It's it's Boise State versus Colorado. And you just put the blinders on that way and get, you know, we got jobs to do. We're doing our jobs. Both teams, you know, both teams, we have process that we're all doing to get ready for the game. And it's not never about me and Tad. And, you know, we'll regroup later. And But for now, it's Boise State versus Colorado. Fifth row in the back. Coach Rice, uh, Bob Beeler from Bronco Radio Network. Why don't you tell me a little bit about you watch Colorado all the time. What when you saw that name, what concerns you most about what you're going to see on the floor? I think the the two things that jump out at me is is you know just how good they've been playing because you know like I said, Tad and I would talk after every game. I'm all you know, and and they were working through things just like every team does and. You know, when down the stretch, they were playing so good. And I remember saying to him, like, you know, because about two or three weeks ago, they were out, considered out of the tournament. Now, those forecasts don't seem to have known anything anyways. But, you know, the world was telling them they were out. And I'm like, I remember saying to him, like, man, you guys are playing so good it'd be a shame if you didn't get in because you know you could you could make a big run in this thing the way you guys are playing and then they flashed up and I'm like wow that that's the team we get to play so no he's just got them playing so great now and you know they they made it to the championship of their tournament and you know it was a one possession game basically at the end of that so you know and, and I remember when I was talking to him about that, I'm like, man, you guys are playing as good as anybody in that league. You can win that tournament. And and sure enough, they were right there to do that. So that, that's probably the thing that jumped out at me the most is how well they, he's got them playing right now. The follow-up would be you guys did play last year. Some of the guys are the same. Obviously, some are different. Do you think that game will have any bearing on this game? No. I mean, is when you look back at that film, it's com completely different teams, really. And it was at the start of the year last year. And, um, you know, so, yeah, completely different deal. Third row. Jay Tusk, KTVB. Um, going back into uh, deep into my phone archive pictures, there's uh, photos, you know, of your sons coming here. And yeah. um, your oldest was half his age. And Cade, who's now on your roster, was just looked like a little boy. Yeah. What, what do you remember about them, you know, bringing them to Dayton and surrounding them with this environment? And what did that do for their dreams? Well, it's funny because I was just talking to Coach Beheim. I said, you know, you, you've been to so many NCAA tournaments. You've won a national championship. You haven't came to Dayton as many times as I have, so I got you beat there. So, because this is my third to Dayton, and you know, 
this this is I, I remember back then when we got off the bus and you know off the plane onto the on the bus and then got off at the hotel just the greeting and you know Dayton does such a good job hosting this thing that it I told our guys hey it's it's great it's real it's a cool environment great place to play other than the fact we had to play the home team that was made it a little rough we were the last team to ever play a true road game in the NCAA tournament so we're a Someday I might, if that's a Jeopardy question, I could get a Jeopardy question right. I think that would be the one. Um, but, you know, they they came here and they saw it and they saw the excitement of the NCAA tournament. But, you know, back before that, they'd been, this is my 16th NCAA tournament. And so they'd been to a lot of them, you know, at my previous job too. So, uh, but that, you know, at Boise State, that was two of the first ones. And, and it was back-to-back Dayton. So, uh they, they saw, and they also saw what a team can do coming out of Dayton because, you know, we played LaSalle and they went on to the Sweet 16. And, you know, it's, like I said, it's the advantage that nobody wants to have. It's an advantage to have played a game. Nobody wants to have that advantage that you've already played one. But, you know, you look at some of these conference terms, even in ours, New Mexico played one, made a run. You looked at, you know, NC State just made a five-game amazing run. Uh by playing that first day but you know so uh the team that comes out of here usually is is playing a little bit better than or and already has a game under their belt uh follow up um 12 is he's been a guy that super basketball savvy wears his heart on his sleeve chip on his shoulder whatever you want it feels like those are attributes that play well this time of year um what has he meant to this program? Yeah. And uh, how much do you want him to see him extend his career yeah, one that's, day at a time? That's it. And it wakes you up in the middle of the night, and you're like, you know, you don't want this to end because it's been a great run. You look at the last three years. It was, you know, arguably the best three years in the history of Boise State basketball. And he's been a huge part of all these wins, a huge, you know. The, the, you can just go back to specific shots you can go back to you know that game at the pit where we're breaking down the film like huh what'd we do well well max made every shot he took you know from half court and uh and scored 35 points and you know heck of a road win the the shot at san diego state the last year san diego state at home with the 12-0 run to end the game by himself you know not i mean those points were by himself the the win wasn't by himself i'm not saying that but he's just contributed to so many great moments in boise state basketball that will be forever remembered because like i said it's the three best years in the history of the program arguably you know and uh in the mountain west i mean you got to remember those other teams weren't in the mountain west which is a fantastic basketball league so uh, yeah, it's hopefully we can keep this thing going because, you know, we know that when the final buzzer goes off, we don't get to be together. He doesn't get to be a Bronco anymore. And, and you'd hate to even think about that. So we don't want to, we don't want to deal with that. And, uh, you know, Mac, Max is certainly that way. He, he wants to extend this thing as long as he can. Coach, you mentioned the three tra- straight trips to the NCAA tournament, but uh, to add to that, what, what's the Mountain West as a conference yep. has, has been able to do, and obviously now six teams in the tournament. Uh, talk about your conference and then how it just continues to sort of impress year after year. Yeah, and, and it just keeps getting better. I mean, it's been a basketball league for a long time. I mean, you got national champions in this league. You got, I mean, last year, San Diego State's in the national championship game. And uh, so it's just, you know, we've always known that how good the teams were but the 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 people out from outside don't understand how you know I've through my years of coaching I've played at all kinds of different arenas and venues and we've got the toughest arenas that you'll ever play at I mean where it's impossible to you're hoping to get out alive let alone win a basketball game it's phenomenal and then you got terrific coaches that when I first got in the league you're like Every coach on the other sideline was like, well, that guy's in the Hall of Fame. going to be in the Hall of Fame. That guy's in the Hall of Fame. And the, I mean, just is amazing coaches. And now, you know, we've always had a lot of, you know, guys that went on to play in the NBA and first number one pick in the drafts, a couple of those. And, 
you know, MV, MVP of the NBA and things like that. We've had great players. But now what you've seen is now these teams all got really old. And I think that's what made all, made it special this year. You look at all the guards in our league, especially the, these teams are led by veteran quarterbacks. You know, only us and UNLV had younger point guards. And, you know, New Mexico had three of them, so Donovan Dent's young, but the other two were old. And when you get veteran quarterbacks that are good players, and not good players, great players, you're going to have good teams, and that's where it starts. And, and I think that was what made our league a little bit different this year is, you know, is, is how many – good guards there were that were old and you know and that's where it started and then great players all around them so that you know that's why we got six teams in let's go to the second row on the aisle hey coach marcus hartman dayton daily news and with there's been a lot of things floating around about potentially making some changes to the tournament maybe expansion maybe messing with the auto bids who knows what they might do but i just kind of wonder what if you have any viewpoint on any of those kinds of things yeah it's for another day i i i you know I'll let the experts figure all that out. I'm not smart enough to figure all that out. I'm just grateful. You know, there's a lot of really, really good teams that would trade places with us. And, you know, a lot of really good. I watched a lot of that Big East action. Holy cow. You know, and some of their resumes were so impressive. And so, you know, because now, you know, like I told our team, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you play. It doesn't matter who you play. Because, number one, I've never been to an NCAA. You know, like I said, I've been to 16 of them. And I've never, we've, I've never seen a bad team. <laughs> if you get to this tournament, you've done something special to get here. And, you know, so you just need to let uh, – seed doesn't matter. Location doesn't matter. Brackets don't matter. You got to find a way to play really good because you're going to play a really good team, and if you don't, you're out of the tournament. And that simple as that. And you know, so we're excited to play, excited to be here. You know, it, it, our guys are just can't wait to get on the court and let the fur fly. Third row, J T S K T V B. Got two for you about Tyson Dagenhart. First off. Um, he has made his development almost seem effortless, which I know probably couldn't be further from the case. Right, right. But he says this is, it, this is no different than his first NCAA tournament. How, how has he just been able to handle this so effortlessly, it's seemingly, and continue to grow and embrace people coming after him now with scouting report after scouting report? Yeah, because he's just an everyday guy. You know, he just, he's, there's such a consistency about, you know, a guy like Tyson. He just does his stuff. I mean, there, you know, it shouldn't surprise you. He's, you know, one of those straight A students. Just a, it shows up, does his work, and does it with a great attitude, and wants to develop, and wants to get better, and wants to be coached. All the things that, you know, you never want to take for granted, but you just, it's so consistent with Tyson that you almost do. And, and I'm never surprised by his growth because of the person he is. And so don't be surprised that it keeps going. I mean, you know. There's, I mean, he went from freshman of the year to all conference to first team all conference, and there's going to be some great things for him down the road, too. So we're going to see that. Uh, one more question, second row. You know, Leon, you, two years ago, you guys went to Portland, uh, you know, kind of a team that had never played in this tournament. Um, now you guys have Max, Tyson, even Buzo has played in three. You know, what's that experience mean for you guys? Yeah, it, it absolutely helps you. It you know the 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 more experience you get in these tournaments, the better. And the more times you knock on the door, pretty soon the door is going to open. And you know, so that's the because, like I said, it's it's a hard tournament to get to. There's a lot of great teams, and there's a lot. You know, this year there's so much parity. Everybody, you know, the the it's apples and oranges and grapefruits. And so to compare all this stuff. And to figure out who the 68 are is, is pretty tough because there's so many good teams and worthy teams that aren't playing in this tournament. And so we're, we understand that it's quite an accomplishment just to get here. And, but, you know, the tournament is everything now. And so you got to get beyond just getting here. But getting here is an amazing accomplishment.